Peter, what is Angela Merkel doing up in Beijing again? She's going there so often now, I'm starting to think she likes the food there or something. Well, I mean, she's uh, officially, she's there in her position as the German head of state and right. representing Germany. And imagine there'll be a few big trade deals struck, uh, Airbus, Airbus jets, I guess. Exactly, yeah. things yeah. like that. Um, but actually, behind the scenes, uh, I think what's happening is mm -hmm. she's there to um, try to persuade the Chinese leadership that the Eurozone is actually finally getting its act together right. and that things will be okay and maybe to ask for a bit of help well, from yeah, the Chinese I mean, at the same sounds time. Sounds like I thought she might be there with hat in hand. I mean, if she, on the one hand, if she sells them too strongly on Europe, they won't want to buy any bonds. They won't think they need it. If she, does, if she says that they really need the money, they'll think they're too weak. So how is she, what's the story she's going to sell? What's the situation in Europe from your well, point of view? Well, I, th I think what happened with the Chinese was that they were... Uh, Particularly, they, they were very upset about the Greek default, um, right. the Greek haircut. Mm -hmm. And so I suspect part of it will be to say, that was a one-off, this isn't going to happen again. And we actually have a plan for Spain and for Italy. Do and, they have um, a plan? Well, um, I think that remains to be seen. Right. And I think the, actually the person who really needs to talk about that is not Angela Merkel, but, but, but he's back in, um, uh, and he's not going to Jackson Hole, is, is Mario Draghi. Right. Now, um, I remember over the summer vacation, he was saying he was the man with the plan, not a canal Panama, but he definitely had somebody who was going to do whatever it took. This is good news for Asia because over the last year, I mean, our markets here, they're just moving up and down depending on what happens in Europe to some extent. We've got the economy very weak. We've got money moving back and forth. We had money rush out of Asia in the fall. Now it seems like there's plenty of money chasing yield out here. What's going to happen with European investors and banks in September? Is it going to be back to chaos? Are we going to have to sort of run for the hills? Uh, not necessarily. I mean, but a lot of it depends on the ECB. So really, right. we've sort of had sort of vague promises from the ECB to say, we'll do some bond buying. Um, we really need to see the meat on the bones there. And that's okay. going to come up um, basically next week. Um, and then it really depends on what happens with Greece. Does Greece, can Greece kind of put some kind of package together? Or does it, do, do people actually run out of patience with Greece right. and finally kick them out of the euro, which would precipitate another crisis. Right. And there's also the question with the Spanish bailout. In order to benefit from the ECB buying, bond mm -hmm. buying, Spain and possibly Italy will have to apply for some kind of help. So the question then is, are they going to do that? Will they do it in time? And how will the markets react to that when it comes? And what do you think the answer is? I think the answer is that it's like, much like it's been before. People are right. waiting for a, a big bang solution. Yeah. There is no big bang solution. People are also thinking that the alternative is that the whole thing will fall apart. Right. But actually what the Eurozone has managed to show so far, and it's risky, is that it can sort of muddle through. Now that's not great for the European economy, it's not no. great for the European people, it's not great for the world economy. It won't be good for Asian markets, that's for sure. It probably won't, but right. I guess it's a question of how much they expect to happen, really. We'll have to see as soon as Angela Merkel gets back and takes, takes the helm again. Yes.